I'm about to embark on the journey of a lifetime. This one video game challenge will push me to the limits, test my patience, but more importantly, hone my skills as the top Animal Crossing player. Yes, my friends, we are finally doing it. After four years of playing these games and having several islands, I am doing the one thing I thought I would never do. This is the tale of how I finished the Animal Crossing New Horizons Museum. Hello my friends and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Sapphire and you guys, I have a confession to make. I'm a collector, a completionist by heart, and if there's one thing about me is that in any cozy game, I love a good museum collection. I've finished the Stardew Valley Museum multiple times, I'm almost done with the Sunhaven collection, but there's one museum I've never actually finished, and that's Animal Crossing. And as somebody who only played these games based on the aesthetics and having a cute island, I wanted to change that narrative. I won't worry about villagers that I get, how the island looks, I'm only going to worry about the critters that I catch and the art that I find. And in this journey today, I'm only going to put one rule on myself. No Nintendo Online and no Treasure Islands. I must finish this museum collection on my own and by myself. And so, with all of that out of the way, Here's how I caught 80 bugs, 80 fish, 73 fossils, 43 pieces of art, and 40 sea creatures in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Our journey started off on quite the somber note because I had to delete my old Animal Crossing save file. That's right, rest in peace to my tropical Kid Coral Island Bingo Bay that I started and never finished. Gone, but not forgotten. Anyways, with a brand new save file booted up, I customized my character, chose the Southern Hemisphere, and on my literal first attempt, got a heart pond on an island. Like, wow, this is so cute, you guys. Wait, this island's so cute! Are you joking me? And before I go any further, I also utilized a spreadsheet to track my entire museum progress. I later found out that this spreadsheet is for the New Leaf Museum, which was not the most ideal, but I still made it work regardless. Anyways, a huge shout out to Olasing from the Belchery Forms for the spreadsheet. But with that, it was time to officially visit our brand new island. Okay, villager predictions. I am totally, hmm, Shari and Boots. And then Green Airport, I'll just guess. I guess Green Airport, I was right. Okay, and we got Becky, Becky Home Ecky. I'm not Becky Home Ecky. I don't whip up costumes. And we were off. I got my tent from Timmy and Tommy and set up camp on the beach. I also gave tree branches and apples to Tom Nook and then decided on my island name. And since for once in my lifetime playing this game, I am not focusing on the aesthetics, I wasn't feeling super under pressure for a cute island name. Oh, who am I kidding, you guys? I spent 20 minutes picking a cute name after this island. But after scouring the internet for a cute name, I couldn't find one. So I did what I had to do. I turned to my friend Katie, a literal professional archaeologist for help. And she was the right choice because she gave me the perfect name, Shovel Bum Island. According to her, it's a pretty common nickname for archaeologists working in the field. And for me, who was doing a ton of digging in this game, it was perfect. Anyways, I slept overnight, woke up, got my insane debt from Tom Nook, and started the early game schlub. All I really cared about was getting tools to catch bugs and fish, so I did Tom Nook's stupid DIY course to unlock the fishing rod and bug catching net. And here we are, the first catches of our challenge. I got to work catching a bunch of bugs including the common blue bottle, a tiger butterfly, an earth boring dung beetle, a grasshopper, a brown cicada, and a darner dragonfly. But all good things must come to an end. And after that, I also had some unlucky catches. Oh, please don't mess this up. <laughs> come on, baby. No, no. I decided to switch gears here and try some fishing instead. Catching a horse mackerel, a ribbon eel, a squid, a sweet fish, and a bluegill. And with pockets full, I visited Tom Nook to show him my findings. 
Commence Operation Get Blathers to Shovel Bum. And after sending off four critters to Blathers, we were able to formally invite him to the island. For convenience sake, I popped the tent right above mine. And the following day, I met the bespeckled bird and began dumping all of my critters onto him. With Blathers' goal being to open a fully operational museum, I'd need to give him 15 critters. Piece of cake. Also, in case you're wondering about my bug catching, fish catching strategy here, are you new to the channel? If you are, first of all, welcome. And second of all, we do not plan things here, folks. The main strategy is to simply catch <laughs> everything, obviously. This is the challenge. Anyways, we also had our first run in with wasps, which, well, I'll let the clip speak for itself. Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. First try? First try, please. Please, please. <laughs> what? Oh, come on. I also made a shovel, a vaulting pole, and a new net. With shovel in hand, I took up my very first fossils and had them pretty shortly after. I then continued donating each and every item painstakingly slow. This part always takes so very long, you guys, until I got the best news the museum could now officially open. After our first big victory, I caught even more critters and also reclaimed the wasp catch. The following day, I also paid off my very first loan with Tom Nook, releasing me of the financial burden of talking to new- Oh, another loan? Great. Upon the grand opening of the Shovelbum Museum, I dumped more critters and fossils into Blather's feathered fingers, before digging up even more fossils and catching more critters, including a monarch butterfly, a walker cicada, a walking leaf, and a wharf roach. I also donated all of the materials to build Nook's Cranny. Although, I eventually got bored of the current month, so I time traveled to January, which in the southern hemisphere is summer, baby. But really though, I just wanted an excuse to catch some sharks. Leave me alone! With Nook's Cranny built, I also bought a wetsuit to go diving and start working on the Diving Critters catalog. I also bought turners from Daisy May to catch the ant and the fly required for it. I then went on another huge catching spree and caught a zebra turkey fish, a clownfish, a seahorse, a mosquito, a red snapper, and a stingray. To much dismay though, I haven't seen a single shark yet. But in an effort to spend more time catching and less time in Nook's Cranny buying tools, I ordered up the Better Tools DIY recipe and the tool ring for convenience. I also chopped down a ton of trees, since a lot of the beetles only spawn on stumps. And then, a couple days later, the best thing happened. Rain struck the island, which means one thing and one thing only. It's time to catch the cola can. Or try. Try to catch it. This thing is tough, you guys. The colacanth, like many other New Horizons fish, have a very rare spawn rate, which means actually hooking it is pretty tough. So while running around on my island that day, I did a bunch of catching, and also had my very first shark encounter. <gasps> Our first shark! Finally! <laughs> Finally! Oh my god, what's it gonna be? Hammerhead? Oh. Great. I also caught a saw stag, sea grapes, a moray eel, and a sea pineapple. But meanwhile, the colacanth still did not appear. This thing just would not spawn, and any large shadows would just be everyone's favorite sea plus fish. And after two hours of searching for the colacanth, I made a startling and alarming discovery. In order for one to spawn, you must have caught a hundred fish. And I've only caught 54. Are you kidding? Anyway, I spent the next hour of my life catching a hundred fish for the minimum threshold. What a joy this game is sometimes. During my catching spree, I did catch some notable fish including a hammerhead shark, an arapaima, an arowana, and a softshell turtle, so not a total loss. I also caught a great white shark and a whale shark before time traveling back for my coldacanth. I returned later in the evening to try again, and finally I caught it. Yes! Yes! Finally! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, finally. 
I also caught a horn dynastid, donated everything, and then skipped to fall to start working on more bug catching and diving. I then had a devastating loss. No! Then caught a stink bug, a flatworm, a turban shell, a spotted garden eel, and other diving critters. I then reclaimed the violent beetle catch, caught a longhorn beetle. I have to catch this bug. No one disturb me. No, no, no. This is horrible. This is so, okay, we're fine. Okay, there we go. We got it, we're fine. <laughs> and then prepared for my next big ocean catch, the oarfish. This behemoth of a monster is like the colacanth and is very hard to catch. I mean, quite frankly, I don't even want to catch this thing. Like, have you guys seen a picture of it in real life? It's horrifying. It is terrifying. I don't want to go near it. Alas, for perfection, I must. And so, we fish on. I also start working on beating the game in order to unlock Harv's Island and the permanent red stall that comes with it. I really didn't want to since I kind of hate the three star grind, but I had no choice seeing as how I haven't seen red once yet. So I built a bridge, set up my three plots, and moved in three villagers. But speak of the devil, Red showed up finally. And thank god he was selling at least one real statue. So I bought the Valiant statue first. I also caught an ant, and visited a Nook Mystery Island for the first time. I got some coconuts, caught some new fish, met Celeste, and then caught more evening critters including an angelfish, a moth, a crawfish, and this atlas moth. At this point in my challenge, I really want to just talk about why this challenge has been so fun for me and why I love it so much. If you've been here since the beginning, you will know that I actually started this channel based on Animal Crossing content. In the early days, I pretty much only made building videos and building challenge sort of stuff, but like a lot of Animal Crossing creators, I got super burnt out. I kind of just lost the joy for Animal Crossing and didn't want to even touch the game. And for a year, that's what I did. I didn't play it, I didn't think about it. Like a lot of us, I kind of just lost interest. But recently, I've been wanting to play it again, and I thought that this challenge where I collected critters and art and all that good stuff would be my solution. And honestly, it kind of has been. It's just been so much fun running around, catching bugs, and not worrying about making a cute island. And I feel like for a lot of Animal Crossing OGs, this kind of might be obvious. This is kind of the whole point of original Animal Crossing in the first place. But oh my gosh, just, oh, it's just been so much fun, you guys. Honestly, I recommend doing this. If you haven't already finished the museum, just give it a try. Anyway, this has been a Safi rant. Let's get back into the video now. I brought more stuff to the museum, upgraded resident services, upgraded Nook's cranny, assessed a bunch of fossils, built a campsite, and then time traveled to winter to catch a new assortment of critters. But before I could do that, we had a campsite villager, which meant meeting our designated smug resident. This villager is never cute. I don't have any expectations. I have zero high hopes. Whatever happens, happens, but I really don't have any, like, no. I don't like Phil. I don't. Ugh. Uh, anyways, after choosing a spot in the far corner for Phil, I caught a bunch of new critters. This included a damselfly, a pond smelt, a bitterling, a sea butterfly, a sweet shrimp, a sea cucumber, and the emperor butterfly. But I couldn't get too off track. I still had to find the oarfish. But during my search for it, I also found a tarantula I managed to snag. But then, it was back to the ocean for this sailor. I then had some really rare catches, but not the catches you were expecting. 
Yeah, I caught a sturgeon and then a tuna before the game allowed me to catch this. I then dumped off my latest findings to Blathers and took a walk around the museum to admire my progress. And honestly, it was looking pretty good so far. I then once again returned to Summer and caught a Neon Tetra and a Great Purple Emperor. I also spoke with Isabel to receive my first island rating, a whopping Ooh. one star. Which was probably due to all of the garbage all over my island, but it served a much greater purpose. Anyway, I also bought some property from Tom Nook to advance Project KK, or what I like to call Project Permanent Red Art Stock. I plopped the plot down, and then took exactly one Nook Miles ticket to invite our first Mystery Island resident. Who, uh, happened to be... Um... Okay. Boomer! Perfect. I then built the next three plots and invited this monkey, Gladys, and Ken. But then it was back to catching more critters for the sailor. Why do I keep saying sailor? Okay, anyway. Animal Crossing fun fact. Did you guys know that this fishing rod has a ducky on it as the bobber? This is amazing. Thank you. I also caught a peacock butterfly, a char, a sea slug, a snow crab, and a chambered nautilus for the collection. And then, in an effort to hit three stars, I was super lazy and did the mannequin method to boost our rating. If you guys don't know, this is a sapphire pro tip. You can make your own custom design and then use the mannequin to place it down. For some reason, the game counts the mannequin as a quality furniture item, essentially boosting your score. And then, to pick up all the mannequins, simply update your original custom design, it can literally be one single pixel, and they will all disappear magically. I don't know why this works, but it does. And oh hey look, three stars. I then held the KK concert, unlocked Harv's Island, and the Red Co-op soon after. And to celebrate, I bought the academic painting. I then caught more summer critters including a cicada shell, a rainbow stag, a scorpion, a Miami stag, a giant stag, a Roselia Batessi beetle, a quay fish, and a tiger prawn. I then did a ton of time traveling to collect more art, and bought a graceful painting, an amazing painting, a scary painting, a wistful painting, a beautiful statue, and the solemn painting. But then it was back to bug hunting for me, specifically more beetles. And these proved a challenge. The Horned Atlas, Horned Elephant, Horned Hercules, and Goliath Beetle can only be found spawning on palm trees. And as it is, each of these bugs have pretty low spawn rates, so this would be tough. But you know what's even tougher? Being in the wrong month. Yeah, that's right, I was in the wrong month, you guys. Did we expect it? You should've. As it turns out, being in the Southern Hemisphere, all of the dates and months are backwards, and I have a hard time comprehending this, and so, at times, it was tough trying to tell when bugs actually spawn. In hindsight, it perhaps wasn't the best idea to pick the Southern Hemisphere, but at this point, that ship has sailed, again with the sailor puns. Anyways, check out this catch. Oh, baby, we got a new bug. Ah! <laughs> Oh, I don't want to mess this up. I'm so gonna mess this up. Take it slow. Oh my god. Look at this beetle! Eh. Yes! Aha! Goliath beetle! Let's go! So I caught the Goliath beetle, the Blue Weevil beetle, the Horned Elephant, and then failed this catch. <gasps> no! In better news, I also caught whatever this is called, caught a horned Hercules, and a horned Atlas beetle. Which of course, leaves me with just one beetle to find, the golden stag. So, the search continued. But after an hour of wandering those beaches, the elusive golden stag did not make an appearance. So, I took a break from the beetle hunting to catch my firefly, suffered a brutal scorpion attack, And then bought this quaint painting from Red. 
The summer critter grind then continued. I caught a nibblefish, a guppy, a piranha, an ocean sunfish, a dorado, a giant trevelli, and finally, I swear if Gladys or whatever the hell her name is, bitch, get away from that. Get away from it. Move. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. I finally found it. And this bitch Gladys or whatever her name is. Okay. Okay, we're fine. I don't know if we're okay. I honestly think I'm gonna mess this up right now. Oh thank god. <sighs> <laughs> Does this mean I can retire? Oh, I f wish. So at this point in our journey, I was focusing more closely on catching specific critters. It was no longer cutting it, just doing random fishing and catching. I, dare I say, had to strategize. And with some pond critters I still needed to catch, I finally gave in and bought waterscaping to build bigger ponds for the island. Target number one, the gar, which also looks very goofy. Like, like look at his face. <laughs> it's it's kind of cute, honestly. Anyway, I also caught the snapping turtle, a mahi-mahi, a saddled beecher, a barrel eye, a giant isopod, a horseshoe crab, bought the glowing painting, got an agrius butterfly. Where'd it go? I need it. I need that one. Oh my God. I need it. Ah, make it. Eh. Eh. Please, 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 please. No, 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 no. Yes! Then, unfortunately failed this catch. There's the scarab beetle. I didn't think it was real. <gasps> but luckily, reclaimed it later. This one's also just kind of cute and shiny. I like him a lot. And then I also caught the gar. I then crafted a shit ton of fish bait, finally caught the Popeye goldfish, and then focused on my next big ocean catch, the blue marlin. At this point in the challenge, I was feeling pretty good. We also entered our fossil era, where unfortunately, everything being assessed was already in the museum, meaning it was getting harder and harder to actually find new stuff to finish the collection. I was catching, digging, donating, rinse and repeat while one critter in the background continued to elude me. The fly. This thing isn't even like super rare or that hard to find. I was just unlucky. And I had trash everywhere on my island. I mean, I was literally swimming in it. And yet, this fly would not spawn. And for reference, I pretty much put trash out immediately. But sadly, it continued to elude me. Until finally, on one winter's day, Finally, I have been trying to catch you boys literally for weeks. Oh my goodness. I then spent a lot of time collecting more art and fossils, which wasn't a good time. Overall, especially at the art grind, this was probably the most boring and tedious part of this challenge. It wasn't all bad though. I brought in a lot of fossils to blathers and finally I had something new. Oh! Oh, oh, a new fossil? Please, is this both of them? It's just one. Is this all I needed for the museum? Am I done now? <gasps> oh my God. Yeah, I wasn't quite done just yet. With this donation, I only had two fossils to find, a stego skull and a right quetzal wing. And so back to grinding we go. At this point, I really wanted to fully finish off one museum section, so I paused the critter catching to finish off the fossil section. I could see hope on the horizon, just two more fossils needed. I spent my days digging new fossils in the hopes one or both would be revealed. Admittedly though, this hunt wasn't going well. I mean, are you guys surprised? It's two fossils that I need, just two. That's like finding a needle in a haystack or Raymond in a sea of stinkies. But after seeing Blather shake his head no dozens of times, it finally happened. Well, at least one. We got one of the fossils, meaning all I had left was a right quetzal wing. Or so I thought. You guys know how I had that big spreadsheet full of all the donations to the museum? Well, uh, for the fossil section, I haven't been filling it out. Meaning I still needed more fossils than the right quetzal wing. 
because after a ton of evaluation, I finally had something new. It just wasn't the Quetzal wing. Come on, baby. Please. Oh! Yes! Oh my goodness! It's over! It's over! Yes! Wait. What? What the fuck is this? No! I really couldn't catch a break here because even after donating the Quetzal wing, I was still missing something. This turned out to be Jeremiah. Not this guy, this guy. Anyways, I'll spare you all the boring details. We eventually found the Jeremiah and finished off the fossil exhibit for real this time. It honestly felt pretty good to finally have one section fully finished off. And so the following day, I received my fossil poster from Blathers and hung it up proudly in my home. Just looking at the poster, I felt inspired. I felt motivated. I can actually do this. This challenge was actually attainable. And so next, it was time to catch all of the remaining bugs. The Emperor Birdwing Butterfly, a walking stick, a giraffe stag, a giant water beetle, and a flea. I luckily caught the birdwing butterfly and the giraffe stag pretty easily, and then spent an hour trying to find the walking stick. I honestly thought this thing didn't exist. Until finally, after an hour listening to every FNAF fan song, I found the walking stick. I then caught a giant water bug on a mystery island tour, a king salmon, a mitten crab, a blowfish, then spent hours trying to catch some of the hardest fish, the golden trout and the stringfish. I sold heaps of fish to Timmy and Tommy on my quest for completion, but after two hours of nothing but garbage, I took a well-deserved break. I also caught some new diving critters including a sea pig, a Dunganess, Dunganese crab, a red king crab, a spider crab, a firefly squid, a spiny lobster, and the regular lobster. It then hit me that I only was four critters away from finishing off the sea catalog, so I went ahead and finished that next. This included catching the Gigas giant clam, an umbrella octopus, a vampire squid, and finally, the Venus flower basket, fully finishing off my entire sea critter collection. I headed to the museum pronto to hand over the critters and received my second poster from my wall. All that remained now, and arguably the hardest ones to do, the bugs, fish, and art. But I wasn't slowing down, folks. We were speeding up. We were sprinting to the finish line. Nothing could stop us. Wait, what is that? I, what, what is that? Oh my God. All right, folks, allow me to introduce to you the flea, one of the most annoying bugs in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I feel like players get grouped into two categories, people who can find the flea very easily and those who can't find it at all because this thing has the most obnoxious catching conditions, which are as follows. A flea cannot spawn if a flea has spawned on a villager, a flea previously spawned within the last 16 minutes, the player has not completed the prologue by sleeping in their camping cot during their first day, there is an event going on or a villager's birthday, KK Sliders on the island, the current date is at least seven days past the creation of the island, and a flea cannot spawn, the villager on the island currently is valid for a flea to spawn in the first place. Whatever the hell that means. And if a flea can spawn, it's a 0.5 or 1% chance in the game. With all the information presented, I decided the best course of action was to keep entering and exiting resident services to force spawn new bugs. And then bing bing boom would be easy, right? Simple even. <laughs> Wrong! Yeah, this was rough. No matter how many times I entered resident services, the flea would just not appear. But this was the last bug in my collection. I couldn't let this stop me. I wouldn't. I then got the brilliant idea of boxing in all of my residents into one corner. That way, when they're all corralled, I could easily check for fleas. This did not work. With no luck, I time traveled to a rainy day since fewer bugs spawn in the rain, and because fleas can spawn in rain. Are you, are you itchy? Are you itchy? Are you itchy? 
I need you to be itchy. Why don't you be itchy? Are you itchy? Be itchy! This did not work either, and with a belly full of kadobas and a brain turned to jelly, I logged off for the night to return the following day fully refreshed and ready to go. Today's approach was a little bit different. I decided to do some red art farming and then in between each red session, check for fleas. But while doing this, this happened. I got it! Oh my god, I found it! Oh my god! Get over here, you dirty bitch! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so happy. I'm actually so happy right now. I'm legitimately... So, oh my god. I didn't think it was gonna happen. I didn't think it was possible. It was an emotional roller coaster, Blathers. <gasps> yes! And just like that, I finished the book collection too. Three down, only two to go. I proudly hung up that bug poster before heading back outside because we still had work to do. All that remained between me and completion was three pieces of art and three fish. That's it. And with more than half the collection done, finishing the entire museum was no longer a dream. It was a reality, and I had to keep going. I decided to tackle the art collection next because I wasn't quite ready for the fish grind. In total, I had to collect the nice painting, the scenic painting, and the great statue. And somehow, I think the Animal Crossing gods, or Tom Nook, whoever, could tell that I was almost done with the entire collection because I found the nice painting, the scenic painting, and the great statue honestly pretty easily. Like, too easily. But, uh, I'll take it. Yo, shout out to Catnip for subscribing. <laughs> And so with all three pieces of art in my gremlin grubby little hands, I hightailed it to the museum to finish yet another museum collection. That's right folks, me, a true patron of the arts. Anyways, I then added our fourth poster to our collection, and then realized we only had one more to go. But arguably, the fish catalog was the hardest. See, because with the bugs, you can actually see each overworld sprite in the game, and so you can easily tell when bugs are spawning, which bugs are spawning, and have them despawn because you can tell, you can see them. With the fish, it's just the shadow, and you're only going off the shadow. And so I still need the blue marlin, which is a extra large, huge sized shadow, but it could just be a sea bass. And trust me folks, we caught a lot of sea bass. Anyways, this in my opinion makes the fish the hardest. Rant over. Oh, also, when I said that I had to only find three more fish, I lied. I have to find five fish. But you guys, this one is not totally on me. My little spreadsheet Google Doc form is for New Leaf, like I said earlier, and so I actually was missing a bunch of fish. And so, the official fish that I have to catch to finish the museum 100% is the Ranchu Goldfish, a beta, the Golden Trout, the Stringfish, and the Blue Marlin. Let's get into it. For me, the obvious choice was to start with the Golden Trout and the Stringfish, since both can be caught in the same area at the same time. I then tried going to a mystery island instead to see if the fish spawning rates would be a little bit better. So of course, it's my luck when I get this. Did I really just get a cake mountain? Are you kidding me? Wait, oh, are you actually joking me? And then on my second ticket, I got this. Okay, it's just an- I need a normal island. Why the game now decides to give me all of the rare mystery island tours, I will never know. At least on our third ticket, we actually got a waterfall, which means hypothetically golden trout and stringfish should be able to spawn. But will they? No, of course not. Why would they? And after hours of searching, I took a quick break to instead catch the Popeye goldfish and the beta. After like an additional two more hours of searching, but we won't talk about it. It's fine. I'm fine. Anyways, the golden trout stringfish saga continued. And while I caught a ton more black bass, cherry salmon, and yellow perch, we finally had a breakthrough. 
Finally! I caught... Oh. oh my god. Finally. Holy shit. And that's just one of the fish. I need two. So I scooped up dozens of manila clams, crafted more fish bait, and got to work. When me and this one guy uh, are doing the objective and two of the other guys, I can see them in the distance just with the bugs. Oh my god. And I see more and more like tunnel breaches showing up where the bugs spawn from. Like, that's funny. That is funny. You know what's also funny? Freddy Fazbear. This is not the golden trout. And then, it was like a miracle. Shortly after catching the string fish, this happened. Oh! <gasps> oh! Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> I'm gonna pass out. Oh my god, I have one more fish! One more fish! Just the blue marlin! That's literally it! Just one fish! Oh my god, it's actually happening. Okay, I just need a blue marlin and then I'm done with the entire museum collection, so I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Oh no! Oh my god, do not release it. Holy shit. <laughs> Imagine. I would I would actually just give up. <laughs> Is this it? Dude, is my one bait gonna be the blue marlin? Dude, are you serious? No, okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine, that's okay. All right, gang, it is here. The final fish, no. The final thing I need to finish the entire museum. Just one single blue marlin with a rarity of rare. Thank you for that Animal Crossing. And of course you'd think after spending literally hours of my life trying to catch the golden trout and the string fish, the Animal Crossing gods Tom Nook himself would bless me and make this catch easy. Ugh. It, it, no. It couldn't be easy, you guys. Of course. Of course it couldn't be easy. Do you guys want to know what I caught before I finally found this goddamn blue marlin? I'll tell you. I caught not just one, but two tunas back to back. <gasps> Wait, no! 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 <gasps> Are you joking me? Are you joking me? Oh my god, this is actually so unfair. I then choked trying to catch whatever this was. No! No! What? I then caught an oarfish because of course I had to. Oh, are you joking me? That's actually a joke. And for good measure, one more tuna. Oh my god. <laughs> no! Why? At this point, this game was just playing the cruelest joke on me, and I was not having it, you guys. I was not. I've come so far, and you're telling me I can catch every other rare fish except for the blue mark. Well, okay then. Finally! Oh, it's over! Finally! Oh my goodness! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm exhausted. I was finally done. Every single fish in New Horizons caught. I proudly handed over those final three fish to Blathers with a knowing smile that I was finally done. But then after that, he just said thanks. And that was it. No poster. Nothing. I've made a huge mistake. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't donate something. No, there's no way. This actually cannot be happening to me. I didn't donate something. Okay, what did I not donate? Holy shit. This is a nightmare. This is a nightmare scenario. What did I not donate to the museum?
I actually can't believe this is happening to me. No, I can't believe it. I can't. The, the killy fish. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. It's okay, you guys. The story has a happy ending. I found the killifish, brought to Blathers, and finally, once and for all, actually finished the museum. It was a bit anticlimactic, but you know what? I'll take it. It was chaotic, it was lovely, and it's done. Oh, it's over. Aww. With the final poster waiting in our mailbox, I hung that up before doing one final thing. A walkthrough of our finished collection. It actually feels so crazy to me that Animal Crossing New Horizons came out four years ago. Like, I'm kind of shell-shocked, you know? This game was such a huge part of my life for so long, and I know I'm not the only person who also feels that way. To be honest for a minute, this was my very first Animal Crossing game. I did have New Leaf for my 3DS, but I didn't really play it all that much honestly. And so this was my first big exposure to Animal Crossing as a video game franchise. And it truly has become something so special for me. Something I truly remember in the very early days of COVID as being one of the very few things that I looked forward to. And honestly, it just feels really cool and special to actually finish the museum as one of the very few things in this game that you can work toward a completion for. And it honestly felt like just playing this game for the very first time all over again. Like I was in Facebook groups for Animal Crossing and I would see people talking about like the golden trout and, and how to catch all the different beetles. And I would just read it and be like, I don't care about this, I want to just decorate. And so it just feels really cool to come full circle almost and actually be seeking out tips on how to catch bugs and fish and the art. Like you guys don't want to know how much time I spent in reddits and sub forums trying to figure out how to catch the goddamn flea. You guys have no idea, but it it's just fun. I, I look back on it now when I first started this being like, wow, I did it. I actually did it. And it honestly just makes me want to go back to the older games now and do this all over again. Like, I have an intense desire to play the OG GameCube Animal Crossing and catch all the bugs and fish. Like, you guys, stay tuned because I want to do that for real. As well as other Animal Crossing sort of challenge videos. And I have really cool ideas in the future for other Animal Crossing sort of stuff, so I am super excited for that in the future. But yeah, that would mostly cover it, I think. I want to thank all who watched, who made it to the end of the video. If you're still watching, shout out to you. You're amazing. I appreciate you. And yeah, that will do it. Uh, again, thank you all to my subscribers, my channel members, everyone who's hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you all. And so with that, I am signing off for now. I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.